This is Tim here at Instacluster. Welcome to another episode of Insta Blinks. Today, we will be speaking with Ben Bromhead, the Chief Technology Officer of Instacluster, about a tool he's been working on for a while called Shotover, which is an open source database proxy. But uh, before we dive into it, Ben, thanks so much for joining us, mate. Yeah, awesome, awesome to be back, Tim. I think uh, last time I was here, the beard was a little bushier, um, <laughs> maybe My... a bit more colour in it, and yeah, there's a few more greys now. But uh, yeah, I think just a, a bit more distinguished. Yeah, distinguished. That's it. That's, that's what I'm going for. So. I think I think I'm the same. Um, yeah, so Ben, for those who maybe didn't see the the previous episode, would you mind just giving you giving everyone a bit of an introduction about uh, about your role at Instacluster and a bit about your your background in the in the tech world? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'm, I was a bit worried you're going to tell me to um, recount what that episode was about, but <laughs> no. Look, uh, my name is Ben Bromhead. Um, I'm the CTO and co-founder of, of Instacluster. First and foremost, I, I spend a lot of time working within the open source community, you know, doing bits and pieces. Most of my experience is in the Cassandra community, but, you know, we've also been working on some some exciting stuff, which I'm pretty, pretty pumped to tell everyone about today. And, you know, of course, I do spend a lot of time working very closely with our customers, our product team, uh, and, you know, making sure everyone's kind of talking and, and getting what they need. So I guess diving right into it, mm -hmm. um, can you just yeah tell us a bit about uh, this this tool that you've been working on on hard developing called Shotover? Um, sure. You know, tell us a bit about how it works and and some of the use cases that yeah. um, that you're foreseeing. Yeah. So well, I mean, first of all, uh, it, it's uh, it's definitely just just not myself. Uh, we've got a wonderful team here who've been who've been working on it. So a massive um, you know shout out to those guys. I, I guess first and foremost, what what is Shotover, right? So it is a, a layer seven. Um, that data layer proxy, right? Uh, what that means is it sits in between your application, right? So whether, whether it is a, a, a microservice, a website, a client application, whatever that might be, anything that essentially um, brings in a database driver as a dependency, Shotover will sit between that and your database, right? Uh, Shotover then has the ability to intercept modify, measure, monitor, whatever you want to do with it, database requests as they kind of pass through. Now, some of you might be asking, why do you want to do that? Well, what it does is it actually decouples some of your storage decisions, some of your database and schema decisions from your application business logic, right? Um, and so we've started using it at InstaCluster um, to kind of you leverage and do some of that stuff transparently, you know, without, you know, uh, you know, the end client application necessarily having to make code changes, right? So some great examples of how, of how you can use Shotover include, uh, let's say you have a hot partition, right, within your database and it's causing you various problems um, or it's overloading the server. What we can do is we can then move that hot partition off either to another database we can split it up a little bit um, differently. Uh, we can manage that kind of risk or that that issue within Shotover rather than necessarily having to make application changes, right? Now, quite often hot partitions are a sign that you should make some data model changes, but Shotover buys you some time to do that on the fly without then, you know, having to interrupt your sprints and you can then deal with that kind of issue just as another you know, bug fix or a low priority bug fix, you know, when you kind of got the time to do it, right? So Shotover is really great for some of that reactive stuff, but it's also really good for, um, you know, some of that more ongoing or strategic kind of issues that you might come into, right? Uh, we've started deploying Shotover to help with replication of, you know, a Redis cluster from one region to another, right? So we're using Shotover, intercepting those requests, and then streaming them across to another Redis cluster sitting in a different region, right? And that all kind of happens nice and transparently. Uh, we've also got use cases where you can use uh, Shotover to intercept database requests, again, either to Redis or Cassandra, uh, and encrypt them on the fly, right? So you're encrypting them before they get to the database, you're encrypting at the row level or the, the field level, and that's all happening transparently without your client application needing to know that, right? You know, which can often be a huge burden to developers 
having to manage that, do key management, you know, work on the crypto side of things. And that all just kind of happens and it's fairly portable, right? So so I guess just just summarizing a few of those key points. So decoupling mm -hmm. is, is the big advantage, mm -hmm. making you to allowing users to, to not have to make code changes uh, between the application layer and the database. We've got DR capabilities. So mm -hmm. as you said, you know, doing managed mirroring between uh you know geographic redis clusters mm -hmm. and encryption on the fly which is is all you know really really yep. cool features so yep. obviously when when we're talking about um a proxy layer between the, the application and the database in terms of its overall compatibility are we just mm -hmm. talking specific database technologies or are we is it more broad in terms of its, yeah. its overall integration yeah, so the goal is actually to make this a fairly broad proxy. So the idea is that, you know, we can easily extend it and add different protocol support for different different databases. Um, right out of the gate, it supports the Redis protocol and the Cassandra protocol. And it's smart enough to understand the way that those databases are architectured, you know, so it understands Redis clustering, you know, how to route um, requests to the right uh, master replica or within Cassandra's case, case you know, it's able to then route data record query requests to the right coordinator node that owns that data. So again, you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's like built in specific to those protocols. But the idea is, is that it does support a number of protocols and the operations that we can do on those queries, um, you know, are more or less fairly universal between those ones, right? So being able to encrypt data on say, you know, a, a Redis, client um, connecting to a Redis database, you know, that's going to be the same set of configuration or the same workflow of the user experience encrypting data on the Cassandra side of things. And so, so I guess within, um, within a, any organization, within an, an IT team, you know, mm -hmm. you've got developers, engineers, uh, DevOps teams, like what team should be most excited about, about this new tool? Right. Yeah. I think, I think really both uh, developers, and you know the DevOps or the SREs that are responsible for the database side of things. I think both should be equally um, excited. What it does is it gives you a little bit of control back around what queries are actually hitting your database, right? So it gives you a bit more flexibility around fixing some issues that we common ha commonly have to deal with as DBAs uh, when working with an application team, right? And you know, kind of managing that that interface between. Um, the two teams from an application side of things, it's going to make your life a lot easier, right? You know, you're going to see requirements come down the line around, oh, hey, look, we've got to get, you know, for example, uh, a stream of change data capture changes um, from one system into another. Let's say you've got to get it from, you know, your particular microservice and someone wants it in a Snowflake data warehouse, right? You can use shot over, you know, to start dropping those updates, those database updates into a Kafka queue and off it goes, it can, you can go push that out um, to, you know, wherever you need to do it, right? So it's going to short, shorten a lot of that development life cycle. It's going to mean that it's a lot easier to deal with a lot of those use cases as well. So really, you know, it's it, it's about making DBAs and developers' lives at that intersection between the application and the database way easier. I mean, it sounds like it's taking a lot of boxes. So where how, how do people start using it is this is this available now for for people to get get stuck into or yeah yeah it's it's, it's open source right now so definitely go check out shotover.io which is the project page um that'll give you all the links to the good stuff that you need one the github repository and the documentation pages you know please check it out you know pull it in build it you know we've got a few convenience releases as well for you to just get started on very quickly you know, the fun thing is, is it's built to be very high performance. You know, we wrote it in Rust. It's very, you know, small and tight in terms of its performance envelope. So you can run it both as a sidecar to your application or as a sidecar to your database as well, right? And you can, you know, kind of deploy it and play with it in different ways. So yeah, just get in there, get stuck in and, and give it a go. One thing I'll also say is we are in the process of adding support for the ability to define your own functionality within Shotover through WebAssembly, right? So it's now going to be a lot easier um, to jump in there, you know, a little bit or customize some of the behavior that, that Shotover has yourself, you know, just using JavaScript, right? Or any other la la um, language that supports WebAssembly. Shotover itself is written in, in, in Rust, which is, you know, super fun and cool and exciting at the moment, but it might not be everyone's cup of tea, you know, so we're providing some great extensibility points so people can get stuck in and start customizing this themselves.
Fantastic. And so what about for, say, existing InstaCluster users who, who mm -hmm. leverage our managed services for technologies like Kafka, Redis, Cassandra? Um, do, does, is InstaCluster offering support and services around um, shot over itself? Or how does that look within the ecosystem? Yeah. So, so the way that InstaCluster customers get access or, or the goodness of shot over is we're actually using it to power a number of existing features and upcoming features. So right now, Shotover is powering our multi-region uh, Redis offering. So you can get in there and, and that's how you leverage Shotover. Uh, we're also looking at a number of different um, features coming down the line. For example, automatic caching of Cassandra queries and Cassandra tables in Redis. So, you know, if you've got a table that's a little bit slow and you want that, you know, in memory kind of performance element of it, but you want it to still be backed by that Cassandra durability, you know, we're going to have a solution for you powered by Shotover coming down the line. We'll also be looking at, you know, again, I think the encryption story is going to be really massive. I think, mm. you know, for customers where they really want to adopt the cloud, they really want to adopt a, a, a service provider, a database service provider like InstaCluster and, you know, adopt our platform. But, you know, there's some compliance requirements or, you know, some of that data is a little bit more um important than what they want to do to a, give to a third party you know you can deploy shot over have that transparently encrypted before it even hits us right so it's going to tick a lot of boxes on that side of things uh you know we're also looking at adding broader capability as well around other different databases that even instacluster doesn't necessarily support right you know we want this to be bigger and broader uh than, than instacluster and you know we'd love to see people just using it out in the wild right um, but you know, for the InstaCluster customers, you know, give it a try right now with uh, that that Redis multi-region. Fantastic. Well, Ben, mate, that's um, yeah, it's been it's been a great session. I think it's a super exciting feature and tool for the for the community to get their hands on. And um, you know, big ups to you and the team who've uh, put the hard yards in and and doing all the work and and putting it out there to the open source community. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. Thanks for having me, mate. Thanks, Ben.